When you build your identity, you always have that identity to fall back on. You know who you are, and that allows you to tap in and trust yourself in your decision making. When you trust yourself, you listen to yourself over everyone else. And so why is that important? Well, because you are truly the best expert on you. Thomas Edison, Richard Branson, John F. Kennedy, Mozart, Michael Jordan, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of vocations. Why is it that we rarely hear that they have or had ADHD? And you know what we hear even less about? Serena Williams, Emma Watson, Mel Robbins, Whoopi Goldberg, Agatha Christie, Aaron Brockovich, Cher. Yeah, the successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smart Ass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Otsuka. I'm a lawyer, not a doctor, a lifelong student, now a coach. I'm also the creator of Your ADHD Brain is a OK, a system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your strengths, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest gifts. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, I am Tracy Otsuka. Thank you so much for joining me here for episode number 180 of ADHD for Smart Ass Women. I hope that you'll subscribe to this podcast and our newsletter over at tracyoutsuka.com. You know, my purpose is always to show you who you are and then inspire you to be it. In the thousands of ADHD women that I've had the privilege of meeting, I've never met a one that wasn't truly brilliant at something. Not one. And that includes you. So before we start today's podcast, I'd like to share a few podcast reviews. I want to really acknowledge you for taking the time to write your reviews. Thank you so much. I know None of us have extra time, right? So I just really appreciate you immensely. And I want you to know that they really do help to spread the word so that we can reach even more women with ADHD. Okay, so let's start with Reg Rod Pod from the United States. She titles her podcast review, Great Podcast, As someone newly diagnosed as an adult, this podcast has been so helpful. I love how Tracy talks about challenges that we have and offers real-life science-based solutions. What I love even more is the celebration of the gifts that ADHD brings. Thank you, Reg Rod Pod. I appreciate it. Euselina 3, also from the United States, titles her podcast review, Five Stars for Tracy and Her Amazing Guests. Aren't they amazing? I agree. So, Tracy, thank you for what you do with this podcast. I always put off writing a review because I never think that I can express how much your podcast has helped me in my journey. Can you say perfectionism? So, I won't even try to say all the things perfectly, but I will say thank you. Your work is life-changing, and I have so much gratitude for you. Well, thank you so much, you Selena 3. You know I love the gold stars, and I love hearing that my work is making a difference in your life. So thank you. Then we've got a podcast review from Call 622. XOXO is what it's titled. I don't remember if I already wrote a review or not, because I intend to write one every time I listen to Tracy, so I hope she feels the love, even if I forget to actually do it. I do call 622, so thank you. But Tracy is my sister from another mister. She meets me right where I am at and inspires me to do great things while humorously reminding me how intelligent I am. 
Tracy exudes confidence and empathy, and she does not apologize for stating her mind. When I'm experiencing imposter syndrome, Tracy lifts my spirits by compassionately connecting our shared humanity through our neurodivergent lens. Thank you so much, Calls 622. This one is kind of funny. It's titled Episode 171, but all episodes really. And I think Episode 171, I believe, was the one all about dental health. So this is from C.T. Dub S.J. I went to the United States, excuse me, (laughs) I was going to say from the United States. I went to the dentist today. No cavities, yay. I think this episode helped me take better care of my teeth. And I asked about a mouth guard because my tongue is scalloped from me pushing my teeth and biting my tongue. I explained why I thought I needed one, my recent diagnoses. The dentist asked me how I knew I had ADHD how I sought a diagnosis, and was totally interested in how people with ADHD have more teeth issues. She was wearing a mask, and I saw her eyes flittering back and forth, trying to soak it all in the minute we had to talk. She said her son had been diagnosed yesterday at 19, and now she was going to look into it for herself. I just wanted to say thank you again for this episode. It really struck home with me, and probably soon, my dentist. I love that because what you're doing is it's that wave, right? You're learning something about yourself and then you're relaying it to your dentist. And since she works with patients on their dental health all the time, she should know this, especially since her son was recently diagnosed. Okay, so binged many episodes in true ADHD fashion. This one is from Paris Lachey. Hi, Tracy. I love the podcast so much that I came on iTunes to leave a review. I primarily listen on Spotify. Paris, thank you so much for taking that time. Thank you for all of the information and knowledge that you provide every time. As someone just diagnosed at 33, this podcast has been very helpful to me. And no, do not stop reading the reviews. They're a cool way of engaging your audience, and us Spotify users don't have a place to provide them, so it's nice to know that we're not alone. Absolutely, Paris. I still laugh about, uh, yeah, the one reviewer who didn't like my reviews, but I still love her. Okay, so this is the last one, and I had to review it. It's very, very short because I thought it was funny. So the review, this person gave me one star, And it says, so one-sided. And this is the review. Utterly despise this women-only feminist-driven podcast. It's 2022. Hello, wake up. (laughs) So I sent that review to my daughter, and this is how she responded. She's 23. Isn't it funny, when something isn't geared towards men for once, they get all up in arms. That made me laugh too. You know, my favorite quote, or one of my favorite quotes, you've heard this before, is from Winston Churchill. And it goes something like, you have enemies? Good. It means you've stood up for something for once in your life. Look, when we don't every once in a while piss someone off, I think that's a pretty good indicator that we're playing both ends against the middle, right? We're trying not to ruffle anyone's feathers. And we're not really living our life at all. Instead, what we're trying to do is fit in, not make any waves, and not stand out. And you know how I feel about that, right? The only way you're going to know that your people are your people is if you stand up and speak out and, you know, have an opinion. So, I don't even know, wait, I'm going to look and see if I can find out who the name was from the one-sided review. It was Get It Done from Australia, from Down Under. So anyway, I thought it was funny. And you know what? I even appreciate that review because it means that I'm doing something right. Yep. I'm pissing some people off. Okay. So I know that a lot, we're going to get into the podcast now, right? I know that a lot of ADHD women share this quality with me. I have always been able to walk into a room and know what is going on without hearing one word. It's like I can walk in and I can read the energy of the people in the room. I know who's really happy. I know who's struggling. I know who's pretending to be happy, but really struggling. I know who who needs to be in control, right? I know who cares about others. I know who doesn't. I instantly can sense people's motivations, their agendas, why they're doing what they're doing. 
And outwardly, they may express concern for another human being, but it's abundantly clear to me what their underlying motivations are. And maybe you've heard that Ralph Waldo Emerson quote, what you do speaks so loudly, I cannot hear what you're saying. And I think this is a way of saying that actions speak louder than words, but I think it's also action plus this uncanny ability that we have to read energy. You know, typically I'll have an immediate, often visceral intuition or feeling, right, about what's going on. And then I'll just stand back and watch it all play out. I am so fascinated by people and why they do what they do. I love people. And I would say it's one of my areas of extreme interest, but it's also gotten me into trouble because being ADHD, I am all about authenticity. So I'm direct, right? And I speak up about how I feel. Usually it's when I'm asked um, or when I'm helping someone, but every once in a while, it's also when I'm just plain fed up. And in those instances, I'd say that most of the time people don't want to hear it or they can't see it in themselves. They can't see in themselves what I see in them. When I'm upset, I also have this need to be understood, which means I want to explain detail by detail why I'm upset so that whomever I'm upset with knows exactly how I came to the conclusion I did. And so for years, I'd write emails and letters to explain myself. But, you know, it took me not so long to figure out that that didn't work. Even if I had the best intentions, you know, I needed to get out what I felt. I wanted to make myself understood. And then I felt like, okay, then I can work on repairing the relationship. But I think society, and especially women, are much better at just sweeping it all under the carpet and not dealing with the elephant in the room. I know now that the reason I wrote those emails and letters is because I don't think linearly. So it was a way for me to not only be understood, but to process why I felt the way I did. Now, most of the letters and emails I didn't send. Some I did. You know, lots of times I would finally you know, write the email. And then I would realize that, okay, I feel better. I'm just going to let it go. I never sent things right away. I always gave it several days to several weeks if I were ever to send anything. Um, I also wrote emails and letters. I think it was almost to myself because my working memory wasn't so good. So I couldn't express myself well in person because I would literally forget why I was even upset. And so I often didn't even say anything for years. And then finally, I would just, you know, put my foot down because I just couldn't take anymore. By then, I just had this visceral feeling and a general idea of what was wrong, but I couldn't remember the details. I've just never been one of those people who harbors resentments. I mean, I can't be, right? Again, I can never remember what were the details that got me upset. So I always laugh and joke about the fact that I'm probably the best person to make angry because I don't stay angry long at all because I can't remember why I was angry. And I wonder, can you relate to this? So anyway, shortly after I realized that I had ADHD, but before I was formally diagnosed, I read an article from Dr. Lara Honus Webb, in which she talked about ADHD and the link to interpersonal intuition. This whole idea around interpersonal intuition and the idea that drivenness is a form of hyperactivity, those two things are what really clinched ADHD for me and explained a part of myself that I had always known I had existed, but I had downplayed because more often than not, when I mentioned what I felt, I was told, ah, that's not what's really going on. You're imagining it. Oh, no, I never thought that. That's not why I did this. And so what happens is over time, you just stop speaking up, right? You start thinking that, oh, my gosh, what is wrong with me? Why do I think these things? And then they turn out not to even be true. Well, I have news for you. Anyway, Dr. Webb talked about how many of us with ADHD, we have an intuitive grasp of what others need, feel, and want. Look, sometimes we inappropriately blurt out what we're thinking. We know we can be distractible and we have trouble paying attention to what others are saying. We can be impulsive too, right? 
But underlying these symptoms is also this ability to read other people. And because we have this ability to tune into other people on a deep level, we often dismiss their words completely. What our brains do is they focus on the connections and the relationships between things more than on the specific bits of information. So then what happens, right? You share your impressions with others and they tell you that you're wrong. When you're constantly told you're wrong, you start to think that you're just imagining things. But in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, I know I'm right. I know the way I feel is true. And then months or years later, something happens and whatever you were discussing plays out and you realize you were right all along. This is because we see things that others either want to hide or they can't even see in themselves. I don't know if you've ever felt like you know someone better than they know themselves. And I think this is why, you know, you find many therapists and coaches who have ADHD, probably psychologists and psychiatrists as well. Discovering this link between interpersonal intuition and ADHD is also when I stop trying so hard to make myself understood. I stop having this need or this feeling that I had to explain myself in letters and emails, and I just let it all go. I realized that I was upset because I could read people's underlying motivations, but they were, A, never going to admit that to me. Or B, they couldn't see it in themselves, so it never ultimately resolved anything. So let's talk about intuition, okay? What is intuition? Intuition is that automatic feeling, right? It's not reflective or thought through. We just kind of pick it up and we can't really identify what triggered this automatic idea or feeling, but we know that something did. You know, you just have the sense that your intuition is telling you something. It can feel really familiar. You have the sense about what you should do, but you don't know why. Intuition comes from subconscious experiences that we may not be holding consciously. So what do I mean? Well, our feelings come from our thoughts. And most of the time we understand the connection, but sometimes our processing is so quick. Remember, we have these very fast ADHD brains. So our processing is so quick that our thoughts whiz by really fast and we just end up with a feeling and we don't see or we can't follow the thoughts that lead up to it. So there's nothing psychic or woo-woo about this. Think about it. Wouldn't it make sense that ADHDers are so much more intuitive because our attention wanders around more? You know, we're scanners. It's like when you're driving in a new area. I'm curious if this has ever happened to you and you're paying attention to where you're going. But you're also obviously scanning the horizon as you drive because you're driving there, right? And your eyes are open and you're looking ahead. So you're picking up things that influence your thinking, but you don't realize what you're actually picking up. What you're picking up, it's all subconscious, right? But then you might get to your destination and someone at your destination mentions that, oh, you know, you when you were turned right and you drove past this big red barn and you suddenly know what they're talking about and where that big red barn even is, though you weren't paying attention. And you would have never remembered that big red barn on your own had they not brought it up. So that is intuition. We're scanning our horizon, we're absorbing everything, but we can't be specific about what we're noticing. Intuition is a non-conscious level of thinking. And guess what? Attention is related to intuition. Through all of our senses, stimuli is coming in, we're scanning it all, right? But because we're ADHD, we have a surplus of attention, right? We don't have a deficit of attention. We notice everything, usually all at the same time. Most of it, however, we dismiss and say, okay, that's not important. But some of it actually makes it to our focused attention. The fact that we can know something without knowing how we actually know it means that we're often not aware of what we're actually aware of. Crazy, huh? However, intuition is also always based on some sort of knowledge or expertise 
that we have. There's some background, right? And okay, it's not always an expertise. It can also be an experience that you've had that you're not even aware you had, despite the fact that you're applying that knowledge. And later on down the road, you may realize where the intuition came from, what knowledge it was based on. But right then and there, you don't. And I think that those of us with ADHD have always had an intuition or gut feeling that we're different and we do things differently. The danger is when we don't listen to our intuition and we try to fit in and be like everyone else. I mean, we think this works for everyone else, so why wouldn't it also work for me, right? Well, what we need to do, though, is pay attention to that voice because you know what works for you. And I'll get into more of that in a second. So we were talking about interpersonal intuition in one of the uh, Your ADHD Brain is A-OK groups that I run. And one of the women shared that her intuition had mostly gotten her into trouble because what happened was she was taught to doubt herself from a very early age, and she wasn't even aware of it until she started working through AOK. And she was recounting childhood experiences where she would blurt out things that she had no reason to even know about. And it was really awkward, and she would get herself into trouble for even bringing those experiences up. Of course, what that taught her And and I should mention, too, she was in a home with a lot of childhood trauma. So what that taught her was not to say much about anything, because at this point, she didn't trust that she knew anything, so she just shut her intuition down. Instead, though, what she really needed to do at that point in time was fire it back up and start paying attention to it, because she had been right all along, and that's why, as a child, she was constantly being shut down. So she then went on to say that, you know, I'm really trying to do that, but it's hard to know what's intuition and what is just me being impulsive, right? Sometimes that's what I do. I'm like in the moment. And so she went on to explain that she's in the process of learning the cues that her body would give her because she would often not be able to tell the difference between her anxiety and her intuition. So I asked her at that point, well, Does your anxiety get worse when you don't trust your intuition? And could it be that not trusting your intuition might be what's responsible for at least some of your anxiety? And she thought about it and she said yes, and that she was learning that intuitive feelings are more visceral and they tend to come from her gut, her body, and the feeling of anxiety came more from her head. And I seconded this because when you tend to feel it in your head, your thoughts, right, it's more likely anxiety. When you feel it in your body or your gut, it's more likely intuition. We have this idea that whatever we think is actually true, and it's not. We make things up all the time that we believe are true. I always say, get out of your head. It's a bad neighborhood. I mean, how many times... Has something happened in your life and you make up this elaborate scenario of, oh my God, she's so mad at me or he's so mad at me. And then you discover later that they weren't even thinking about you. Yeah, you can relate, right? So the key is always take that extra moment and pause and ask yourself, you know, when you're feeling this anxiety and, oh my gosh, I did something wrong and what did I do? And I must have said this or did that. You want to ask yourself, pause and ask yourself, is that even true? Those thoughts that you're thinking. And then think about, so when did I think something like this before and it wasn't even true? Sometimes it helps to make a list of all the bad things that you were certain were true, but they turned out not to be, right? And every time something happens where you're so sure that this is the thought and this is what happened... And then it turns out that it's not true, write it down. So then the next time your thoughts start churning and burning, you've got this big old list that you can pull out to question your thoughts. So now that we know what intuition is, what's interpersonal intuition? Well, interpersonal intuition, it refers to the ability to pick up clues about relationships, right? It also includes the capacity for empathy and character judgment. A lot of ADHD women talk about the fact that they feel more empathy for others. 
interpersonal intuition, it's somehow linked to the emotional dysregulation that we typically see in ADHD. We have the same emotion as everyone else, right? We just often feel things more strongly. Interpersonal intuition is clearly related to emotional intelligence. Look, of all my ADHD gifts, this is the one that I say is my superpower. But I've had to learn over time how to trust it rather than negate it. One of my gifts is to read people's motives, to read their energy. I can tell when people aren't truthful. And I've always been able to do this. I know when people are truly happy and at peace and when they're just pretending. And I think my interpersonal intuition is also what allows me to see people's gifts even before they can see them themselves. They just jump out at me in blinding color. I feel them. And I've always had the sense of knowing who people can be, right? Knowing what they look like at their very best. And they may be nowhere near their very best, but I can still see it. It's almost like I see the person and I see this halo around them of who they truly are. And so my goal is to help them to ultimately see that for themselves. And I can honestly trace this back to literally second grade where I was always helping friends to understand themselves and their lives better. You know, friends whose parents were going through divorce or going through um, something that was difficult. I was just born this way. Now, sometimes I will admit, if I'm hyper-focused on someone, I can do a poor job of understanding what is really going on with them because I'm not taking in the surrounding information. I'm just kind of honing in on them. And so because I'm doing that, I'm reinforcing what I already believe to be true about them. So let's say I meet someone at a lunch and I know in advance that they're brilliant. I know in advance that they're successful. But if I'm so focused on them that I listen more to their words and how they present themselves... That just confirms what I already knew to be true. And what happens is I can sometimes miss other stimuli that helps me to really figure out who they truly are. So this ability to block out extraneous stimuli, it's great if you're sitting in a classroom listening to a teacher, right? But in a situation where you need to get the lay of the land and you need to figure out what's really going on with another human, like on a first date, Distracted attention is so valuable because you're not quite sure what is important just yet, right? So it may be that you're taking all this external stimuli in and you don't put it all together until who you're having lunch with, this you know new person that you might date in the future, they might mention something like they had a really tough childhood or they moved to a different country every year. And suddenly everything that they've told you All the external stimuli that you've been taking in, it just all clicks and you're able to make sense of them and everything that they've told you and that you felt about them, their energy, it all makes perfect sense. So one of the downsides to interpersonal intuition that I often struggle with is the fact that Connection is so important to me, like it is for a lot of us with ADHD. And I think it's this need to connect that drives interpersonal intuition, or maybe it's interpersonal intuition that drives the need to connect. But because of my interpersonal intuition, connection can be difficult because of this knowing that we have about who people really are and how they really feel, right? Everyone gets frustrated with others at times. I mean, that's just human nature, but usually we can hide it. We just let it go. We don't even know about it, right? But if you can read this frustration in others every time it happens, it stresses your perception of the relationship because you're always kind of further ahead, right? You already know who this person is. You already know what they're thinking. You know how they feel about you. And so I think it makes things more difficult. The other thing that I'm thinking about, too, is that I've always wanted to be one of those women who travels with a pack of girlfriends, but that's always been very difficult for me. One, because I know the motivations and the insecurities of others, so I feel the energy. Think about it. You put that many people together for an extended period of time, there's bound to be something going on, right? So I find that I spend my time trying to smooth relationships over, which is so not relaxing and honestly 
most people, they don't even realize what's going on. So there's no reason for me to even be in there smoothing these relationships over, right? But it's also harder, I think, to read the energy in a pack because everyone's energy gets all kind of mixed up. And so it bores me because the relationships seem more superficial because it's harder for me to read them. And I'm the kind of person who I always want to get into the gritty stuff, right? I think this is also why we can often be the magnet for everyone's problems because that actually energizes us because it's the intensity of it, right? Rather than exhausting us. Like lots of times friends will say to me, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I'm bothering you with this. And I'm thinking, oh my God, no, I love this. This is so much more interesting than talking about what you just bought at the store yesterday, right? But what happens is I think we can end up in a lot of one-sided relationships where Others are constantly taking, and we're the ones that are doing all the giving. So we're friends, but we end up feeling like the therapist, the divorce lawyer, the child counselor, the relationship advisor, you know, right? And over time, when you're always kind of the one who's doing all the giving, it can get old. Like, it'll be fine for a couple of years. (laughs) Um, I'm thinking of some of my friends who've been through divorces, and it's fine for a couple of years. And then after a while, it's like, okay, come on. We just need to pick up the pieces and move forward. I need some action here. We can't just keep, you know, rehashing the same stuff over and over again. The second thing that I was thinking is if I choose the pack because I'm picky about who I'll spend my time with, it means I'm also the one doing all the work leading, right? I'm the cruise director. I'm coordinating. And whereas I used to love to do this and be really good at it, I have so much more going on now that I don't have the time or the interest to do it any longer. What I've come to realize is that I just love being around ADHD women because they're so authentic and transparent. And I don't feel like I have to ever diminish myself around them. I can literally tell them all the best things that are going on in my life. And they're actually really happy for me. They want to hear it. And I want to do the same for them. So I feel like I don't have to do all the heavy lifting. I don't have to do all the work because they're equal partners in the relationship. I've also discovered, and and maybe this is why it's easier, is because a lot of them are also entrepreneurs. So we have so much more in common. And it's exciting for me to talk about other people's businesses and to hear about what other people are doing, right, as far as building their businesses. I just, I've said this many times before, I mean, just going for those spa weekends, it is just not my thing. I I can't stand them, to be honest. I'd rather be home with my husband and family. I'm just too, I think I'm probably just too hyperactive to be able to sit still and, you know, be on a table and the whole massage thing. No, not my thing. But what I do love is I love meeting women friends for workshops and seminars and business events where we're all working and learning together. I mean, that camaraderie, I live for that. I really love it. And I've been lucky because over the past several years, I've you know been able to amass a group of women friends from all over the world who share my interests, they share my brain, and it's made a huge difference in my happiness. I tend to feel like You know, I just don't fit in in the big group of girlfriends. And I know it's my fault, but I would just much rather meet them individually because, again, I'm bored in groups. I need the intensity of being one on one and talking about things that really matter to me. And of course, them. The other thing that I've noticed about ADHD women is they generally don't care about social hierarchies, which I love. It's almost like their entire goal is just to connect. They're intensely curious. And if that person piques their curiosity, they don't care if that person has the right pedigree, the right education, the right look. In fact, I think that kind of judginess is distasteful to ADHD women because, again, they're all about authenticity, right? If you're interesting to me, you're in. We tend to be very inclusive and maybe it's our justice sensitivity, but we're usually not about keeping things exclusive. We like to broaden the tent rather than shrink it. And then finally, we often can't keep our mouths shut, right? Authenticity and integrity is so important to us so that if we don't voice our opinions, we can often feel inauthentic and phony. And we can also spot that in others. And we really don't like it. I mean, I really struggled with this, especially when it involved an underdog type situation. If I thought people were being cruel or unfair, I just had to open my mouth. And it didn't matter who was on the receiving end. I would jump to their defense. And 
when they didn't do the same thing for me because they were more concerned about social niceties, I would just be like, okay, I'm done. I'm out of here. However, today I kind of realized that my opinion does not always have to be heard right then and there. You know, my blurting out insights is because I'm trying to connect. I'm trying to find my people in this inequity, yet often this doesn't really help connecting at all. And so I've realized that it's okay to pause and put together a game plan because I'm much more successful at affecting change when I do it that way rather than, you know, when I come out with all guns blazing or whatever that phrase is. Because, you know, as ADHDers, we're change agents. We're all about challenging the status quo. And so we're mostly about challenging the status quo. We have vision, we see possibilities, but the truth of the matter is most people don't, nor do they like change. I mean, think about it. It's much more comfortable to stay exactly where we are. So I get it, even though I can't imagine a more difficult way to live my life. I mean, that is just not who I am. So I constantly tell myself, what you're seeing is not what most people see. So just relax and let it go for a bit. Your opinion and insight, it's not always needed in this immediate moment. Now, our intuition, I believe, is one of our most valuable gifts, especially in cases where there's trauma. And if you have ADHD, you know that all the little times of being told you're not good enough, you're difficult, you're not doing it right, you're not very smart, you're too loud, you're too much, you're too loud ever, that all those little cuts add up to trauma and it can be a pretty sizable trauma. And the way you heal trauma is you get really solid on your identity, who you are, what's important to you, what do you value, what are your strengths, what are you passionate about and where does your purpose live? When you get clear on all of those questions, you learn how to trust yourself. This is what creates a solid identity. And when you build your identity, you always have that identity to fall back on. You know who you are, and that allows you to tap in and trust yourself in your decision-making. When you trust yourself, you listen to yourself over everyone else. And so why is that important? Well, because you are truly the best expert on you. Look, with ADHD, over time, we can start listening to everyone else, right? We ask everybody what we should do next, how we should do it, when we should do it. And the thing is, they don't have a clue what's right for you. They just know what's right for them, usually. But you know who does know what's right for you? You do. And that rudder in your body that you tap into, your, your intuition, if you will, when you learn how to read it, it will never let you down. So how do you read it? When you feel positive emotion in your body, you're moving in the right direction. When you're feeling negative emotion, you're moving in the wrong direction. That emotion is your intuition. So listen to it. And that's what I have for you for today. So if you like this episode, please let us know by leaving a review. Our goal is to change the conversation around ADHD, helping as many women as we possibly can learn how their ADHD brains work so that they too may discover their amazing strengths. And your reviews, they really help. You know they do, right? I read them all at the beginning. They provide so much positive emotion, not only for me, I'm not that important, but they provide positive emotion for others who are considering listening to the podcast. And we know that the podcast can change lives. So I really appreciate you. I appreciate the fact that you show up every week. And I just so appreciate that I am allowed to record this podcast because it is one of my favorite things that I get to do. And it's so much more fun when I can actually research and record this podcast and know that there are other people on the other side that appreciate what I'm doing. So I just wanted to say thank you again. As always, you are listening to ADHD for Smart Ass Women. Come join me over at tracyatsuka.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. 
Not coincidentally, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, it's also the name of our free Facebook group. We're a totally smart ass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. Join us at tracyoutsuka.com, where you can also find more information on our Your ADHD Brain is A OK system. I spy a happier life for us, and I'll see you again next week.